I'll do one more video here from Math Pace 1090. And uh, this is about the difference between permutations and combinations. And um, this can be a little tricky. So let's just talk about uh, some of the procedures for doing this. And, and really, I want to start with explaining the difference between these. Let's say we have seven Bible quiz teams. I don't know if you're if your youth group or school has ever been on a Bible quiz team, but um, <clears throat> what they tend to do is put three teams together and have them compete against each other and then regroup and have three other teams and keep working, that way, working their way down until they end up with a first, second, and third place. All right? So if we just wanted to see if a specific order would be, if I want to figure out what are the possible ways that seven teams could be arranged to have a first, second, and third place, okay, that would be a specific order. Um, <coughs> so let's start by saying seven is the number of teams, so that would be the N, and then R is the number of groups possible, all right? So if we're doing a permutation, we're going to do 7 factorial, we use the exclamation point, over N, which is 7 minus 3 factorial. And then if I solve that, I get 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then down here, 7 minus 3 is 4, so 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, now we can notice easily that this cancels, this cancels, this cancels, this, of course, one cancels out. So the answer is 7 times 6 times 5, which is 210. All right, so that would be the, you know what, I think I got, did I get this mixed up? Combination where the order, okay, combination is where the order does not matter. No, I did it right. Okay, second guessing myself while I'm making the video here. Permutation is objects arranged in a specific order. Okay. Then a combination would be taking, uh, we take the same answer to this, so we would solve this part of the problem first. And so combination would be 7 and the 3 over R, which in this case is the 3 factorial. So this, I already solved this here, and that's 210. But then I'm going to divide by 3 times 2 times 1, okay? And so 210 divided by 6. Whoops, did that wrong. Is 35. <clears throat> I could have also taken, uh, just take this part here, that's 7, 6, 5, okay, rather than write 210. I could have said, okay, that's 7 times 6 times 5 because everything else canceled out. And then I could see that 3 times 2 is 6, and so 7 times 5 is 35, okay? So when you get to your self-test, your checkup, your self-test, your pace test, you do need to have these formulas memorized, okay, and know how to plug into these two. They're a little bit different from each other. All right, and uh, the math is not hard. It's just keeping the formula straight, okay? And uh, make a little cue card, quiz yourself a little bit, make sure you have that before you try to do the, uh, the testing at the end of this pace. Um, I skipped over the section here about um, whisker graphs, and uh, what page was that on? Page 29, 30, 31. I don't think you'll find that to be uh, too hard. It's just a, another way of picturing or illustrating data. And uh, again, this is an interesting, it's a little different concept than stuff that we've covered thus far with, uh, remember that pace early on with base two and things like that, wow. And then you've done a lot of algebra. In the next pace, you're gonna do some geometry. So you're getting a lot of variety in this course. And uh, this pace here about statistics, again, it's just a little bit different, different way to use numbers but it is, uh, there's a lot of practical applications in real life for doing this kind of a thing. So I hope you do well on your test.